You're listening to the Dream App Podcast. Today I'm joined by Chris Huxley's, one of TikTok's most famous lucid dreamers. He can actually control his dreams, a trick that I think many of us would like to be able to learn. In this episode, he shares the secrets of lucid dreaming, how it started for him, and some of the craziest things that he's seen. For more about Chris, just check the links in the description. And if you want to learn more about your dreams and what they mean, just download Dream App for free. Let's get into it. Welcome. I'm joined today by Chris. How are you, man? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, happy to be here. Happy to be here. Uh, it's been it's been great, man. Just living life, doing my thing on TikTok, as are you. Um, that's how I came across your videos originally. I think it was several of my followers tagged me in your videos because you do a lot of work in the lucid dreaming world. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, so has that been like always just kind of the way that you dream or like when did lucid dreaming really start for you in that journey of like putting it on TikTok? It's so interesting. It's so weird. Basically what happened was, I mean, I was a kid, I think I was six years old and I was having these lucid dreams, but I didn't know it was, you know, a lucid dream. I just thought it was regular and everyone had these. And I used to have so much fun in them. Um, I watched like Wizards of Waverly Place. So I'd kind of like make a wand appear in my hand. And I was no able way. to like, make things happen with the wand. And I just thought it was completely normal. And I thought it was fun. Um, and it kind of just, you know, it was consistent. And I remember when I was 11, my sister had started talking to me about lucid dreaming and stuff like that. And <laughs> it was funny, we were in the living room and she's like, okay, we can get into a lucid dream if we lay on our backs on the couch and like do this and that and we'll fall into a dream. And so we tried it, but it, it never worked that well for me. It just kind of happened naturally. Um, so you're and, like backwards. Most people are like, are like they talk about their dreams and they're like, oh, I can lucid dream. What's that? And you're like, oh, <laughs> honey, I've been lucid dreaming since before I've been regular dreaming. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. And I don't I don't know why. I'm not sure. I wonder if it has something to do with like, I don't know, probably some deeper like chemical um, explanation. <laughs> but as far as posting on TikTok, when I made my account, it was actually my spam account because I had a different account at the time. And okay. um, I decided to follow this trend. I don't know if you remember, but lucid dreaming was actually a big trend where you'd like um, kind of play scary music in the background, turn your head and um, make a, or not make, you would uh, relay a scary story from your dreams. And I did that once and the video kind of just blew up overnight and I was shocked because that's never happened to me before. And so yeah. I just kept doing it and now that's all I do. <laughs> now you're, now you're the lucid dream guy on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember that one. What was that back like 2020? It was actually back in June of 2021. 2021. So okay. I should have seen it. I don't, it's not ringing a bell, but um, there's so many trends on TikTok. I could have missed it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So lucid dreaming's just been the way that it works for you. Well, it's interesting that you say that because um, I've been, you know, I'm always trying to like stay up to date on the research and the things that are going on in the scientific community. They used to think that lucid dreaming was kind of this hybrid state between uh, conscious awareness, like waking self and dream self. But actually, since they've done that research, um, I won't get too technical into it, but the way that they were imaging the brain, uh, it turns out that there was like this noise uh, that they thought was showing that you were conscious while you were dreaming. But it turns out that was like a flaw in the way that they were recording this research. So when you eliminate that like extra noise, um, there's no difference. Uh, lucid dreaming is actually just a REM state. It's the same. But some people just experience it where they have more control in that state. So just some really interesting things. I mean, I think that research came out like this year um, about how lucid dreaming is just a normal REM state but some people experience it differently with that level of control. Um, so anyways, you say that about wondering if, you know, your brain has like a different chemical mix up. I'm kind of of the opinion right now that it's just personality. 
I think people have different personalities and your waking life personality kind of influences your dream personality. And so some people have control in their dreams. Some people have very vivid dreams. Me, I actually can't see very well in my dreams. I have what's called aphantasia. So like if I close my eyes, I can't picture things very well. That's like really difficult for me. It means that I also get lost and don't do well with directions like ever. <laughs> but um, that's just my dream personality because seeing things very vividly is not something that I'm naturally very good at. So, well, it kind of makes me wonder, like, what are your dreams like? What is your dream personality? Wow. Okay. You kind of just blew my mind with that personality thing <laughs> because I have very vivid dreams, like even if they're not lucid. Um, it kind of just feels like I'm on a whole other planet and they yeah. tend to be pretty evil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that says about how I interpret things sometimes, but. Hmm. Well, it's, know. it's interesting, right? Cause like, there's this, there's this kind of junction between like science and metaphysics, like the spiritual world and the scientific world. And some of these questions that we're asking, we like, we don't have answers yet. Like we just learned that lucid dreaming is not a hybrid state. It's just a REM state. Um, so I have my theories about it and I can share those with you, but I don't, I don't know. It's kind of cool that we don't know. We can start to try and figure these things out, you know? Yeah, no, it's funny because I talked, I talk to my therapist a lot about this and it's funny how we literally get into like the metaphysics stuff it's like there's so many things you can't explain and honestly i had no idea uh, you i just learned from you that it's not like a hybrid state but i keep hearing from people that lucid dreaming can also occur like when you're not in REM sleep is that like do you know if that's true or has that not been documented yet um, it hasn't been documented yet to my knowledge. Um, so the way that they have looked into, uh, lucid dreaming, um, uh, is that there's a famous, really, really important, uh, researcher, his name's Dr. Steven Laberge. Uh, have you heard of him? No, I haven't. He's super cool. Yeah. I, I got to see him actually at, um, a conference for the International Association for the Study of Dreams. He looks at, he's just this old kind of like hippy dippy guy and he, he looks like Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. He's got like this long neck and he kind of walks like this. <laughs> <laughs> he's fantastic. But he's the one who actually documented lucid dreaming first. He was the first to document it and research on it. Um, and the way that he was able to do that is while someone was in a lucid dream, uh, they would become aware that they were dreaming and then they would signal to the researcher by looking left, right, left, right. And as we know, REM sleep, rapid eye movement, you can see the eyes moving underneath the eyelids while you're sleeping. So in the dream, when they looked left, right, left, right, their eyeballs would go left, right, left, right. And so that was the signal. Okay, they're lucid dreaming, start documenting, start recording what the brain waves are doing so we can look into this. Um, so he's never been able to record it outside of uh, the REM state because of the rapid eye movement. Now, we, we know that we dream outside of REM sleep. We dream several times throughout the night, but we don't know if we lucid dream outside of REM, uh, at least not that I'm aware of yet. So to be determined, but definitely a possibility. Yeah, I, I, find, I just find it so fascinating that it's such a new you know, topic and research relatively and that, and that we don't know that much about it. It's fascinating. Yeah, especially because we've been dreaming like as like human beings, like we've been dreaming for like forever. So it's just kind of wild that like we haven't um, we don't know that much about it yet. Yeah, it's crazy. I think <laughs> this is a little off topic, but there's sure. some, there's a um, thing that fascinates me uh, that I read about. It's where like these scientists are trying to um, like recreate dreams by looking at uh brain waves basically like it's if i remember correctly it's like people are put in an mri machine and they dream or, sorry i'm ahead of myself they're shown pictures and like videos and stuff and then when they go to sleep they see which waves match like the waves that were happening when they saw the pictures and they're trying to recreate that and i'm wondering if in the future like it'll become like a thing to just like record your dreams in that way 
And imagine how cool it would be if you could record your lucid dreams. <laughs> Wild. Wild. Yeah, I um I do know that study. I think it was out of Japan that they did that. Um and it's it's pretty interesting that they can actually get like, I mean, there's limitations to it. They can't do everything and perfectly record it, but they can track the way that your brain waves look when you're looking at a picture of like a puppy dog. And then if it shows that same like pattern of wavelengths while you're sleeping, they know that you're dreaming about a puppy dog. And it's like, holy shit, like that's crazy. Yeah, I, that's so cool to me. Yeah, super neat, super neat. Well, I think it's really cool that you lucid dream like just naturally or perhaps even more than you regular dream. Is there like a ratio to them, like the amount of times that you lucid dream to how often you just, I guess, nor normie dream? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's It changes, you know, if there is a ratio because I don't know. There has something is happening in my life when I have lucid dreams and I never like actually sit down and think. But some weeks I'll have more lucid dreams than regular dreams. Probably like, you know, when I first started making content, TikTok was probably about two or three times a week. And that was like mm. still when COVID and the pandemic was strong. Um, and but nowadays it's more like one day a week. It's weird. And it happens mostly uh, if I take a nap. Um, and my sleep schedule has always been super weird. So <laughs> that probably has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, usually, usually. There's um, there's a couple of things that we do kind of know about like dreaming and lucid dreaming that like stress can increase that. Anxiety can kind of increase that. Uh, poor sleep schedule, sleep deprivation, foods sometimes. Like, I don't know if you ever watch like Selena Spooky Boo on TikTok, but like her sleepwalking videos that she does all the time. Um, there's certain things that can kind of like trigger it a little bit more. Um, but there is something to be said about like emotional intensity and like lucid dreaming. So like if you're having a time in your life that's a little bit more emotionally intense, you're more likely to have like vivid dreams or perhaps lucid dreams. Um, but I'll also say, because I, I tell people that sometimes, and they're like, well, life's been very emotionally intense, and I haven't been dreaming at all. <laughs> well, <laughs> when life's emotionally intense, usually we like jump out of bed and like get right to work because we're so stressed about what's going on. It's that transition period that kind of causes you to forget. So you may have dreamed very intensely, but you forgot because you were like looking right at your work phone calendar when you got up in the morning and didn't save any time to like document your dreams or write them down. So that that can happen too. Um, I don't know any any theories for you, like why you might have lucid dreams more often and why you might not. You know, this is something I really try to think about a lot. Um, really, maybe it has something to do with anxiety because you know I do have anxiety, and maybe it just happens during times when I'm feeling extra anxious for some reason. Um, mm. I don't know. You make a good point about documenting your dreams, though. I feel like um, I forget them pretty easily, and I've had to try to make it a habit to um, write them down right as I wake up. So some of the lucid dreams I have, I forget. Because, you know, that just happens when yeah, they're common, you know? Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's really easy to forget. I do that, too. Like, I have to, I have to write them down right away. And what's... <laughs> What sucks is like when you first wake up, you're like so tired. You're like, man, I can give it five minutes. I can give it five minutes. I'll write it down. Like, let me just snooze. And then nope, it's fucking gone. <laughs> Literally. Like one day I was recently, I was so exhausted. I'm like, no, this dream was so interesting. It could be a movie. So I like wrote it down. And then yeah. as I was getting ready, I forgot like 70% of the details when I was reading it back in my notes. And I'm like, ah, I know. Wow. <laughs> It's like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dreams are fragile, man. Like, it, there's almost like, um, I don't know, like, it, to get kind of like metaphysical with it, it's like this birthing process, right? It's like you're you're taking this like little incubated child of a dream and like birthing it into the waking world. And it's like that transition is like almost like dangerous or adventurous or scary for the dream. Like, you don't know if it's going to like make it through that like birthing process. And so 
you kind of have to take like some extra special care of it. Like wrap your dream in some bubble wrap, you know, <laughs> make sure <laughs> right fragile handle with care as you're like trying to deliver it into the waking world. <laughs> I just imagine like you fading away from the dream and you're actually like, bubble wrapping it before you go. I just thought that funny oh, on, visual in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, well, so you have a lot of a lot of visuals in your head and you say they're they're pretty dark. Like I was gonna ask too, as I was kind of like making some notes about like your content. Um, I was gonna say, like, do you have a background in like horror story writing or like uh short stories kind of stuff? Because your dreams very thematic usually pretty dark and like um not like spiritual in like a religious way but spiritual in like a who am i like what are they gonna do to me kind of way you know yeah um gosh could you repeat the question i like already slipped out of my head <laughs> i don't i don't even know if i asked a question i was just like um most of your dreams are kind of like dark like that but you don't oh. necessarily have a history in dark stuff like no i mean the only dark thing in my history is like i love horror movies and i've had since i was like a kid but that's it you yeah know? that's it hmm. and i am also very open about the fact that a lot of my content is also me making stories about other people's dreams and my friends dreams um and i usually oh, okay. put that in my comments um but for the most part it is still my dreams um, yeah. yeah, but I don't have a background in like any sort of like horror story writing or anything like that. I'm not even that good of a writer in general. So, <laughs> well, your dreams are a really great writer. Let me tell you that. <laughs> You're right. You know, I can leverage those dreams next time I lucid dream. I'll just get my typewriter or something. I, you know, that's another thing I find really cool that people can like build their talents in their lucid dreams by playing like music instruments or coming up with melodies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We actually, um, so the, the app that I kind of helped founded dream app, uh, sponsored me to go to that conference. And I talked with a researcher, uh, in the United States who was researching how athletes practice their sport in their lucid dreams and like looked to yeah. see if there's any functional improvement. And so, uh, there's an episode that we made, um, for dream app just about that. And it's so, it's just so interesting. Like, there's been shown some improvement, like those who practice their skills or their sports, like in their dreams, show improvement when they wake up. Um, That's it's just wild. Like there's like this whole other part of ourselves that um, most people just kind of ignore. And it has like some functional benefits, like even for your waking life, like it improves your life, which is just crazy that we don't take more advantage of it, at least in my opinion. Totally. And I feel like you know, facing your fears is like one of the biggest things you can do uh, to improve your waking yeah. life. Because, for example, like say someone's afraid of social situations in a lucid dream, they have the power to like create one and like live through it. And it's kind of like, you know, sometimes you have to experience things to, you know, make them better in real life. And it's a great yeah. like therapeutic tool, self therapeutic tool in a way. Do you ever use it like for therapy? I mean, you know, using that term sort of loosely, right? Like yes. go see a counselor for sure. I want to advocate for mental health, obviously. But like, have you used dreaming as a way to kind of confront problems for yourself personally or even learn new things? I've tried, but I always run into problems okay. with it. Like what? Like, I'll try to talk to people, you know, because people in your dreams are just you, right? So I try to ask them questions, you know, that would probably help me see through things. And <laughs> they they either just completely ignore me or they come up with some bogus response, which is very typical of dream characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it usually is. <laughs> well, it's funny because it is like, it's also yourself. So it's like, and you're kind of a jerk to yourself. <laughs> I know. I swear. No, I on, man, the other day. Break? <laughs> one of my dream signs is endless bathrooms. I don't know why, but uh, recently I was in one. And I'm like, okay, um, I'm in a dream. I'm gonna go up to someone and ask them about like to show me a past memory or something because it was the video I had made about someone else's dream. I'm like, I'm in the situation where I can do that now, so I'm gonna ask them. And they just looked at me like they were so disappointed. <laughs> and that was it. 
Oh no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh no. When you say when you say one of your dream signs is an endless bathroom, what do you what do you kind of mean by that for you? So when I find myself going into a public restroom and you know, it looks normal. And then I see like this door in like the back corner. I'm like, what's that? So I go in there and through the door is like this giant like auditorium or something of like these bathroom halls. It's like the bathroom just never ends and it's wow. stalls and stalls of toilets. Sometimes they're stalls or sometimes there's something else. But for some reason, I still think they're like, you know, the toilet, like lo sometimes they're lockers. Sometimes they're... Okay. Um, uh, you know, those pinball machines, arcades and stuff like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Pinball machines. So you'll have a bathroom with pinball machines in it. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like I'm having a vivid memory of like SpongeBob or something. <laughs> That's amazing. But yeah. The, it happens so much that like when that happens, I just know I'm in a dream. Yeah. OK. OK. So that's almost like uh, like your reality test, you know? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because some people will like will like look at their hands and if they have more than five fingers or less than five fingers, like, oh, I'm dreaming. OK, that's not how it's supposed to be. Uh, some people will like read something. You look away and then you read it again. And if it changes, you're like, oh, OK, well, I know words on a page don't change when you look away. So I'm dreaming right now. Yours is right. endless bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, you know, like. I get into lucid dreams just randomly, right? But like these dream signs or these situations um, help me get into them as well. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I know like one time I took out my phone because I don't know why, but even though I'm aware in these dreams, it's not like I'm fully there. So I, I took out my phone yes. and I tried to record around. I'm like, yes, this will appear on my phone in real life when I wake up. <laughs> and when I woke up, I was just like, Come on, like really? <laughs> Come on, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> like, Dream logic. Like... <laughs> yep. It, it still great. affects you even when you're lucid. It does. It does. Because you're still thinking with that part of your brain. I know when you were talking about that, it definitely unlocked like a dream memory for me of I was in this bathroom. And it's, of course, you know, they do such a great job when they talk about like the back rooms or they have those video games that are like, the back rooms, you know, so like I was in this yeah. bathroom and it was like these tiled floors and walls that were all like that off yellow, you know, Oh no! <laughs> like the back rooms. And so it's just like this endless bathroom. It was huge. And there was like showers and like a washing station for like your hands and stuff. And like some people were going to the bathroom and I was just looking for a place to go to the bathroom. And it's like, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't find anywhere to go to the bathroom. Same. And I'm like, it's so big. Like there should be an open stall. Come on, man. Right. What do these dreams even mean? Like, why do why do we have that like endless bathroom dreams? <laughs> so it's interesting, actually. You know, you said that you have very dark, very kind of demonic sometimes dreams, um, which like seeing and talking with you now to to me makes a lot of sense because um, oftentimes those people who are very nice and very caring, very patient and um, like very empathetic in their waking life will kind of see a counterbalance to that in their dreams because they're very dark. And so it's almost like the nicer and more kind of a person you are here, like the more that the psyche or the mind has to compensate for that in dreams. And I do kind of notice this balance because it's like, I mean, you think about people who like have sociopathic tendencies, right? Or like antisocial personality disorder. They don't have any problems with their dreams. They very rarely nightmare, you know, everything's like everything that they could want. And then they're like terrible, you know, mean people in their waking life, but their dreams are fantastic. And so the brain is always looking for like a way to balance itself out. So like meeting you and how nice you are, I'm like, oh yeah, it makes sense. Your dreams probably are kind of mean to you sometimes, aren't they? <laughs> I have a problem. I don't have a problem with being too nice. It really bites me sometimes. So that makes sense. That really does make sense. I get it. I get it, man. Sometimes it bites you in the ass, you know, I feel it. Mm -hmm. I feel it. I'm so the endless stuff. bathroom thing, I know <laughs> your poor dream self just trying to catch a break. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if you acted like more of an asshole in your day to day life, your dreams would be <laughs> nice to you. <laughs> That's bad advice. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs>
Um, no, but like um, in in the app, we have uh, like a whole a whole list of dictionary uh, items and stuff um, that like people like to use, and it's only like a small part of like what we do at Dream App. Um, the Dream Dictionary is free; anybody can use it. The part that's actually great about it is being able to work with a dream coach to kind of explore it deeper. Uh, but like if you go in the app and you look up demon or like Satan or something, um, it will talk to you and really explain how those kind of images are really a reflection of our rejected parts of the self, right? So all that anxiety, all that self-loathing, all that guilt, all that shame usually gets projected into your dream as kind of like a shadow figure or the devil and stuff like that. And so you're fighting or running away from the guilt and shame that kind of binds you in the daily life. And I mean, I, I know for me, that's true. I don't know if it is for you, um, but that's kind of like when we research that stuff and look into it, that's really kind of what we find. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm just thinking of all the things. It's kind of like everything about you that doesn't show in real life. It's like in this hidden basement in your you know, in the back of your mind that comes out and unlocks when you're dreaming. It's so weird. Yeah, it really is. And I love, um, there's some really old psychoanalysts who talk about it, like Carl Jung. Um, but the theory is that like all characters that we could ever be in our life live inside of us, the good ones, the bad ones, the nice ones, the mean ones. And so we kind of choose which characters to show and which ones to play in our waking life. And so in our dreams, all of those other characters are still there, but because they don't express themselves in their waking life, in your waking life, they express themselves in your dream life. And so it's almost like the more rigid we are about like who we have to be and like how we live our life, the more rigid our dreams become in displaying kind of the opposite of that. And so again, it's like, it's your mind just trying to take care of you and like, trying to balance out all those things. I don't know, does that does that kind of happen in your life too? Like, does that fit with your experience? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, yeah, because, you know, again, I feel like with me, there's a lot of things that I keep to myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just makes sense have like you explaining this um that i have like those types of dreams so i feel like i relate um i'm nice. trying to i'm trying to think of like this one i just this thought just left my head when you were talking about these okay. personalities that you know are inside of us it's really interesting when you say that because mm. are the people in your dreams like just those personalities walking around you know like just you like different versions of you, you know, like the one so, person you talk to can tell you like be one weird, like maybe super creative person or you. And then another one would just be like, get away from me. Like, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'll be honest, like it's one of those things that's like hard to research, hard to really know. Uh, we just can observe the way that some people dream versus the way that other people dream. And so like, as we're going through this and as we're collecting dreams, like inside the app, we've collected over two and a half million dreams at this point. And so like looking at the data and like looking at the way that people dream, we're kind of noticing some correlations, right? So correlation doesn't equal causation, but we're noticing some pretty like strong connections that take place. Um, and so, yeah, that really is the idea. Like, uh, it's it's your brain trying to care for you. It's your brain trying to balance you out. And it's your brain really looking inside to try and find answers that you would never find when you're awake because I'm playing this character, right? But there's like a, a totally different character that I've never really expressed in my life who probably could give me some great advice about like what to do next because they can see things in a way that I can't. And so in our dreams, that person finally gets a voice to talk with you and to maybe give you some insight into how you can live your life better. That would be the thought. Does, do your dreams ever give you advice or help you solve problems like that? Yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah. I feel like it's half and half. 50% of it's like, you know, helpful. Mm -hmm. The other half is like, <laughs> the, it's like they're little pranksters. It's so funny. Like they'll, 
they're, they're not helpful. They'll tell me things that don't make sense. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. a mixture. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It really is, man. Because yeah, like it, it feels um, it feels frustrating for me sometimes because you know I'll have these dreams that just don't feel very helpful or feel like they're making the situation worse. Like when I was a kid, uh, there was a large portion of my like life where I stopped dreaming altogether because I had this one like really wild dream about like some guy doing like uh, Tai Chi or like some kind of like yoga thing on a stage, but he was butt naked. <laughs> doing this <laughs> and and he had uh <laughs> he had very large genitals <laughs> and oh that was God. the dream and so i freaked me out as a kid i was like you know because i'm like going through puberty and i'm like you know which looking back makes sense of course i would dream about like large genitals going through puberty <laughs> but like i had this dream and i was like that's messed up that's not okay remember grew up very conservative religious and so I was like, dreams are not helpful. I need to stop dreaming. It's not, it's not doing anything good for my life. And so I just stressed myself out so much and like just got right to my day that I never remembered my dreams for like the next four years. Um, wow. But looking back, it's like, wow, like that was, that was trying to share something with me that I needed at that time in my life. Um, I needed to kind of embrace that like slow, calm energy that doing like Tai Chi would be. Uh, and also like navigate puberty. So like the dream makes sense now that I'm like old enough to understand it. But back then it felt like my dreams are just antagonizing me, you know? Right. It can be really confusing because your dreams will say something, but you don't know how to interpret it. And so like, you know, in your position, I can imagine you looking back and being like, oh my gosh, all these dreams meant this and this and this. But like, I feel like- Wish I would have known. <laughs> like, you know- it's hard, like trying to figure out what your dreams are telling you and how it relates to your situation in real life. Yeah. Well, and even even for me, like as a, as a dream interpreter, like I wish I would have had some app like Dream App back then, because even now we can only see so much of ourselves. Like I can never really see my blind spots because I am me. And so when you like you know, talk with someone or talk with a dream expert, like they can see your blind spots in a way that you, you never can on your own. And it's just like that process is so valuable, like for me and the therapy that I've been through and like for my clients and the therapy that they go through. So I got to empathize with you because like, you know, dreams just being little buggers, like <laughs> antagonizing you it really does feel that way, man. Yeah. 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 Have there ever been like any big insights that you've gotten through dreams, like any that you can share? If not, that's totally okay too. But I was just wondering, like, I'm so curious about your dreaming mind. Big insights. Oh my gosh. I know there are some, but it's hard to remember them being put on the spot. <laughs> that's okay. Um, that's okay. I just figure I'd ask. Oh gosh. Oh, ah, I can't remember. That's okay. No worries. No worries. No worries. I've got another question. I got another question that I was dying to ask you. There's a sure. lot of talk online um, about like the astral plane, right? Oh my gosh. And, like, I was going to ask you something about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I beat you to it. So you got to answer first. <laughs> do you, what do you think about the astral plane? I mean, I'll definitely share my opinion. Um, it's another one of those where it's like tough to really say, because how, how can you, I mean, yeah, I can't take like scientific instruments to the astral plane and like run tests. <laughs> right, exactly. It's um, tough. It's tough. Yeah, so just tell me what you think about it. It's hard having, I guess, I want to believe that it exists, right? But when I yeah. try to be like, you know, thinking about it in a more realistic way, I like, I think that astral projection and some ways can just be like a lucid dream because a lot of people astral project in places that are familiar to them, like their home. Right. And your mind pretty yeah. much knows like what that looks like. So it does a pretty good job of recreating it and, you know, setting the stage and making you think it's astral projection. And the reason why I think that I don't think that just because it's because um, people will say that if you venture too far out, like, 
it will like start turning into a dream because things will start to mm. appear that aren't actually there because you're doing too much, you know, when you haven't astral projected all that much. Okay. So to me, it's like, how can that not be a dream if it's starting to show you things that aren't actually there in real life, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, it's this, I have kind of feel the same thing with like shifting. I don't know if you've, you probably have heard of shifting, right? It just feels like the lucid dream. Yeah, stuff. explain explain that a little bit for like those listening. I, I have an idea of what shifting is, but it might not be correct. <laughs> so, okay, I, you know, I might not be correct either because I'm not like, I'm not someone who shifts, but I, I, it's where you, it, people say they quantum jump into different realities. Um, and they do that by like writing the script of intentions of where exactly they want to go and what exactly they want to happen. Mm. And for the amount of time they want it to happen. And, um, from the experiences I've read, um, people have said that they've gone to these places and it's actually been the amount of time, like maybe like a year, for example, and it's different from a That's lucid a dream. Commitment. A year? My God. Yeah. I'm scared to and leave my house for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's just because from what I've learned, people like write in a script of like, you know, while they're in this reality, this different reality, I guess, what's it called? Their desired reality. That's what it is. Okay, um, okay. They have some, they have like this guard, I guess, like protecting their body in this life, you know, because they'll say that like their body is still like up and moving around and doing things, you know, it, it's so confusing to me. Like it's wow, fascinating, wild. but it's hard to like wrap my mind around it as I explain it, you know? Yeah. Um, that That's pretty much what I know. There's like this desired reality that you go to and then the current reality is the one that you live in. You can't stay in the desired reality because your current reality is where you're meant to exist. That's, that's right, pretty much right. what I understand. Uh, have you ever done that? Like, like either shifting or astral projecting anything? No, I, I really wanted to try like shifting because people make it seem so fun on TikTok, you know? Um, I haven't done that. I haven't astral projected. And yeah. that, that might be shocking to some people because I lose a dream all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're pretty avid. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, well... Again, tough to say for sure. My thought has been just from my background in mental health and like as a counselor, um, there's a lot of things that we kind of have to like <laughs> rule out. Like I get a lot of people who talk about like um, schizophrenia or disassociative identity. And so like that can just be a natural part of their brain chemistry and kind of the way that their brain works. So sometimes they'll say things and it's like, well, actually, that's just part of your mental health experience, right? Um, other people, I do know that there's a there's some good research on how when we have like deja vu, we will think we dreamed something very specific and then we'll see it and we'll be like, oh my gosh, my dream predicted this exact event. Uh, and when they look into it a little bit deeper, it's actually like a misremembering, right? If you've ever like looked at some of the the documentation about like eyewitness events, when like someone witnesses like a murder or like a robbery or some crime scene, eyewitness events are notoriously bad. <laughs> They're very inaccurate. They'll say they were wearing blue shorts when they were wearing black pants, right? And, <laughs> you know, we kind of know that like perception uh, of human beings is very emotional. Uh, it's actually not very detailed. I mean, you're, if you want a detailed recording, you pull out your cell phone and take a take a video that's a detailed recording brains just don't operate that way they prioritize information in a different sense so we do know that there's some misremembering that goes on and that can happen with dreams but my personal thought is again since we are human beings and we all share this experience of being human beings there are some things that are universal and this is why we can kind of interpret uh, dream symbolism with a certain level of certainty. Um, and that's why we put it, you know, in dream app to have these, this dictionary of symbols, because I have five fingers on my right hand and Chris, just by you being a human being, I'm pretty sure you've got five fingers on your right hand. So the way that like, if I handed you this cup, you would probably pick it up very similar to me. So your mental image of cup 
will probably be very similar to my mental image of cup because we use cups similarly. Now, you could say that we're kind of connected in that way. We have a shared human experience. So if I start dreaming and I go down into these symbols and into these connections of what it means to be just a, a physical, you know, alive human, I'm probably connecting at a very basic level with all of the humans that exist right now. And so in my head, I do think that the astral plane, like if we kind of define it that way, does exist because I'm tapping into my humanity just the same way that you would tap into your humanity. And that's something that we share as human beings connected together. Now, to what extent and like to what you know level can we predict future events? I don't know. And there's been some pretty interesting reports about it. Um, but I do think that there's some level of connection that must be there because just even our brains are structured and shaped similarly. So there's a connection here. I agree. I feel like that kind of relates to a video I made recently on TikTok about how everyone, you know, we have those shared experiences, but then on the other end of it, we all perceive life in different ways too, because mm -hmm. we all have different individual experiences, right? And yeah. so the realities that like these people are saying they're going to is real in the sense that, you know, it's, it's a reality based on what they've observed here. You know, I like thinking about it in that framework, you know? Yeah, I like that too. I, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. People who say that they like can absolutely predict the future. It just, it, to me, it makes me wonder what they're selling. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, I just, I'm a little bit hesitant. I think, I don't know, maybe that's my own just personal background with like spirituality and religion and stuff. Um, but I'm always trying to look for the common denominator, like the common factor. And I appreciate that about like your channel and like the stuff that you do too like especially like the disclaimers in like the comments about like hey it's just a dream like take from it what you will like i hope this makes your life better like i really appreciate about that appreciate that about you and like the way that you care for your audience like it speaks volumes to me and so like that's why i'm excited to have you here right now thank you yeah it's very important to me because i know you know when you see the amount of people you know watching your videos you can never really understand. So someone like just one person watching it can can really you know affect them in a way that you didn't intend for it to. So it's important to have those disclaimers there, you know, just in case. Yeah, yeah. You want to make sure to take care of those people. Well, I like that. I like that a lot. Nice. Yes. Well, I kind of had one other question I wanted to run by you and see just what your thoughts were. Um, what's your experience with like? devices that help lucid dream or um, just just getting into a lucid dream in that way. I know you mentioned for you, it just kind of spontaneously happens, but do you have any advice for people looking to lucid dream or thinking about devices that are supposed to help stimulate those? Um, so to anyone who wants to start lucid dreaming, I feel like they should start with something easy. So if it's a device, okay. you know, that maybe you have on your wrist that vibrates every so often, that's something it's easy. You don't have to worry about it. There's actually a device coming out with a brand that I work with to do just that, which is interesting that you say that. Um, yeah, it's your ex, right? Like I, uh, I've seen yeah. you kind of talk about them and I think they're on TikTok too. Yep. Yep. They're, they're cool. They're making that device to, um, vibrate on your wrist, but also to, record your um voice notes like once you raise your wrist if you when you wake up so you don't have to like write it down oh, uh, when okay, you're really okay. tired um but i feel like the number one thing that i recommend which might be frustrating to some people is to just journal like when you you mm. know wake up because that's the best way because when you go back and read it's going to take a lot of time but you're going to be able to see these common things that happen in your dream and it'll have you thinking about it before you go to bed. And it's, I feel like a very healthy way to get into a, like a lucid dream, right? Because when you see yeah. people getting into like these wake back to bed techniques, um, like they disrupt their sleep cycle by setting an alarm like a few hours after they wake up. I can't see that being very, you know, helpful to, you know, your tiredness. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Talk to any parent of a new child who has to wake up every 30, 45 minutes. Not fun. Exactly. Case in point. Um, and 
Other than that, though, reality checking, like you said, counting your fingers. Or some people try to like put their finger through their wrist or stuff like yep. that. Setting like an alarm on an app um, to or not an alarm, like a reminder every now and then um, every day uh, to have you do that will kind of set the tone um, for you to do it in your dreams because it's just so common and it's a habit for you to do it at that point. Um, mine personally is to uh, count my fingers, actually. So it's a very nice. common one. But nice. yeah. It, you know, it, different things work for different people, you know, a reality checks would be great if it worked for everyone. It doesn't really work that well for me. It's more like remembering huh. my dream signs, like the bathroom, for example. Um, uh, okay. Looking for kind of like reoccurring themes. The reality checking doesn't help as much. Yeah. Because I know some people like, they love the reality checks. Like that works really well for them. I met, I met this girl, her name's Dash, and uh, she wrote on her fingernails, she painted her fingernails and said, are you dreaming on her finger tips? Uh, and so she would look at that cool. throughout the day and that was a way for her to remember. And so she'd look at her fingers and you know, if, if you can't read, are you dreaming or it's a different color or there's no fingernail polish on it at all, you know, that would really kind of trigger that. Um, mm -hmm. but I've got to agree with you, like over and over again, the people that I talk to who are avid lucid dreamers, they tell me. It's not fun and exciting. It's not very catchy, but practice is the best way to make it happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool. I was wondering about those devices and stuff and just kind of your opinion, because I know you had that partnership and stuff. Um, but I think even if you have a device, like you said, the biggest thing is going to be there's no guaranteed way to enter a lucid dream. It's just kind of training your brain to get into that rhythm, to get into that cycle so you can have that happen. Exactly. I just had someone ask me, like, how can I guarantee a lucid dream? And I had to say, like, there's really no way to guarantee it. You just, there, I mean, you can increase your chances by doing these things, but, you know, it happens when it happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, yeah. I, I also think there's, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just being melodramatic, but I think there's, like, a deeper sort of, like emotional significance to that response where it's like, Hey, your, your body's not just something to put a quarter in, you get a gumball out. It's like your body's a living, breathing thing. Like it's a part of you. Like it shapes your personality and how you act and you know, the way that the way that you live. And so you have to take care of it like a relationship. Like if every time, you know, you went to your partner and just like, Hey, I, I want physical intimacy now. Like let's have sex. That's not how it works. Like there's a relationship there <laughs> and right. you can't just like expect something from your partner that way. You have to live with it and love it and care for it. And I think there's something deep about that and how we need to be caring for ourselves and treating ourselves with the same level of respect that we would our partner, or someone we meet on the street, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Makes even me wonder. just like, I feel like even, you know, Maybe some dreams are happening because your sleep schedule's messed up. You're not eating the right things, stuff like that. You know, it's your body. Um, it's it's like that relationship type thing. Take care of your body, and if you don't, it'll let you know that you're not taking care of it very well. <laughs> it'll tell you. It'll tell you. Mental health too, for sure, for sure. Oh yes, that too. Ah, uh, that's really cool. Well, Chris, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day to answer my questions and to kind of share your personal experience about lucid dreaming with people. Uh, I know it's definitely given me some things to think about um, my own mental health and like how to take care of myself. So I hope everyone listening does too. Is there anything uh, kind of before we wrap up that you want to plug or like tell us about or like cool things you're like looking at doing next? Love to hear about <laughs> it. Well... I'll do a plug. So because I have my stream key, I'm doing live streams on my own TikTok. It's not just going to be lucid dreaming stuff. I'm playing some like classic games like Frogger and like arcade games and stuff like that. So Heck if yeah. you are if you're into that or if you're into lucid dreams, there's two reasons to follow right there. So <laughs> Yep, yep. Go check out Chris, uh, Chris Huxley's C-H-R-I-S-H-U-X-L-E-Y-S on TikTok. He's got the streaming capability. He was telling me about it before. He got streaming before I got streaming. So he's got to hook me up on the on the down low. <laughs> TikTok's weird like that, man. I feel like TikTok makes so many things like this little secret society. It's like, what's actually going on? It's yeah, strange. very, 
very sick. <laughs> but very sick. Yeah. Hush, hush. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Jesse, for having me. It's honestly really cool being here. Um, and it feels like the time really went by like super fast. I feel like there's a million more things I could talk about. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Well, I mean, I probably, I doubt it's the last time that we'll be talking on the podcast. So we'll uh, we'll save them up for next time, man. This sounds great. Yes, that would be <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Chris. Well, you have a great rest of your week. And everyone listening, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll check in with you next time. Bye. Bye. Cool. And then you can just hang out for a minute. Let me stop this. <clears throat> okay, so then it'll give you that link to, for you to finish up. Um, just hit the link and let it let it finish. But thanks so much, Chris. This is fantastic. I appreciate yeah. you taking the time. Super organic. Like, it was great. <laughs> like, you flowed real nice. It was wonderful. Oh, God. Okay. That makes me happy. Sometimes when I'm like a little stressed, I kind of ramble and don't make sense. And I was kind of worried I was doing that at a few points. Oh, no, no. I've um, had some ramblers. You weren't a rambler. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Also, that makes me happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was. A little, I felt like I was a little awkward, but then, you know, it just happens. I got into it. Yeah. Yeah. It was real natural. You've got a great personality, man. Do you, uh, do you do podcasts like often? Do you do those? You thought about your own podcast even? This is actually the first time I've ever been on a podcast. Um, uh, nice. Nice then. You did great. Thanks. Uh, I thought about doing my own podcast. Um, I just, you know, don't know how I would go about it, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got the, uh, you got the OBS thing set up. You could do them that way, you know? That's true. I have some people who just like do it over Zoom too. We'll just record a Zoom meeting. That's how most people do it. I was on um gosh, this is like my one big claim to fame. Uh I got a I got a email from Jenny McCarthy, that person who's like on the mass singer. You know her? Yeah. So she had me on her XM radio show to talk about like hypnosis and dreams. Uh and she did her whole thing was through Zoom. Like she had like the premium subscription wow. and like you could record in HD quality. I mean, she paid the the premium monthly subscription, but she did her XM radio show through Zoom. And like that's how she interviews these celebrities and like, you know, all this stuff, you know, she's obviously had much more famous people than me on her show. Um, <laughs> and it's just Zoom because most people have it. So it's like really accessible. Yeah. Isn't that so cool? Because in, in the past, you imagine podcasts, you know, being like side by side in person, but now you can do it on Zoom. It's super accessible. I know. I think, man, I've only had like an in-person podcast like twice. Yeah. And this is like, mm -hmm. this will be like episode 62. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So like most of it's like digital, you know, because I think, I think I started the podcast like 2019. So like we we're going into the pandemic and, you know, we we're kind of already into that sort of remote connection type phase. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know, man, don't, don't let it stop you. There's always a way so, to overcome. Definitely. Wait, so how long have you been on TikTok then? Uh, really? So I started, I really kind of started TikTok. Okay. There's two starts. There's my personal account, which is like gone. Like I don't use that at all. I still have access to it, but I started that in like 2018, right? And that was just to consume content. And I probably looked at TikTok like once a month or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hits so like 2019, early 2020, the pandemic starts. And I was really like worried about my private practice for counseling. I was like, Phew. Nobody's got money. Everyone's staying at home. I need to diversify. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. So it started for me as like a business tool of like advertising and making content and also like a creative outlet because I was stuck at home. So that was 2020. And then I started making content about dreams, just kind of like you. And it, okay, there's an interest in dreams. That's what people want to hear about. So I started making that content and here I am. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, so I am not like I'm not a social in social media influencer first. Like I'm a I'm a mental health provider, like I'm a medical provider first. <laughs> and I just started making videos. No, I, I really find that so cool because I was thinking about that. It's like you're this mental health provider, but you're also this social media influencer. You're living the best of both worlds. 
it's kind of Montana. Yeah, it, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the stress of both worlds too. So I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it though, man. It's been, um, it's come with some incredible opportunities that there's no way I would have been able to have if uh, TikTok wasn't around. So I'm really grateful for it. There's definitely been some heartaches and some headaches, but uh, man, what a ride it's been. And I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, you're yeah. doing really well on TikTok. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. You too. Like your page is growing and you get like, I mean, you just posted a video not too long ago, got over half a million views, like about your dream. Like that was sick. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun when that happens. It makes me feel good. <laughs> it is. It is. Same. Cool, Chris. All right. Hey, well, you need anything? Let me know. You've got my number in my email. Take it easy and uh, we'll keep in touch, man. Thanks. Yeah, of course. And I'll send you some information about like the agency stuff. So please. Yeah. Yeah. You can just, uh, you've got my number. So you can just text it to me. That'd be great. Yeah. I'll do that then. Cool. All Appreciate right. it. Take it easy, Chris. I'll talk to you soon. You too.